Now let's get a little bit more complicated with these common denominators, shall we? Shall we indeed? We got three actual fractions here. And notice in this last one, we got x squared minus 6x plus 8. I would recommend we factor that and see what that is because that's the most helpful thing to do when you start. That's a recommendation worth listening to because how are you going to know what to look for if you don't have things broken down into their smallest bits and right. pieces? It's kind of like whenever you, you do like 1 over 8 plus. 1 over 6? Yeah. You because, could choose 48. Yeah, because 8 times 6 is 48. But if you realize that, hey, this breaks down into 2 and 4 and this breaks down into 2 and 3 and you realize, hey, they have a 2 in common, you realize, oh, 24 works. Right. So that's what we're doing by factoring this over we here. We could multiply everything by x squared minus 6x plus 8, but there's really no need to multiply that. Because it, a lot of times it'll work out like this because it's helpful. Whatever, what multiplies you get 8 that adds you negative 6, negative 2, and negative 4? Mm -hmm. Which look, that's what our denominators on the left side are. Yes. So your common denominators have to have every single representation here. So we have to have an x minus 2, we have to have an x minus 4, and in this denominator, we already have both, we have both of, those. of those. So we just need our common denominator to be x minus 2, x minus 4. That is correct. That's all there is to it. So multiply the whole thing. And again, like we said on the very first slide, you've got to multiply every single thing on both sides by x minus 2, x minus 4. Uh, that's a simple rule of algebra that you picked up when you took algebra 1. So the way we work this out now when we distribute, if we distribute to that first term, we have 3x on top, what's going to cancel? Our x minus 2s will cancel so that we'll just end up multiplying by x minus 4. Right. And that's why we're doing that, because we want to get that denominator to cancel out and go away. If it doesn't, you didn't pick the right that denominator. Is correct. Now if we distribute here to this 5, the x minus 4s will cancel out, so we need to do 5 times x minus 2. Yes. And then on the right side, this one's the best because if I show you this, I had all of this, so it all cancels in any Just like a Mega Millions on one last week, all gone. Oh, really? Yeah. You didn't share? No, it's all gone. That's a little awkward. Sorry. I thought we were friends. We are. Let's distribute. Mega Millions. Let's distribute the wealth. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it's a good, it's a good one. It's a good one, yeah. Okay, so 3x times negative 4, negative 12x. Distribute the 5 here. And it's going to be 10x minus 10. 5x minus 10. Excuse me. Mega one. Millions on the brain. So we've got like terms over here on this side. And let's go ahead and add 10, shall we? Uh, we shall indeed, yes. Hey, look at there. One of the 10s goes away. Like no, we didn't. No, it didn't. I messed up. This ah, minus. Ah. That was a silly mistake. Uh, there well, we what I meant to say was, hey, look at how the 10s go together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So 3x squared minus a 7x. Yes, it's 1 7x. That is correct. A singular. 20. Yes, very good. Fabulous. Yes. Now, will that slide and divide or quadratic formula? Uh, I'm not saying that slide and divide is going to be beneficial here. Uh, I'm feeling let's quadratic try, formula. Let's try the quadratic formula. formula then. If it doesn't look obvious that you can go ahead and factor something, you might as well use the quadratic formula. Because it will factor. If it is something that will factor, your It'll quadratic formula will come out nice and pretty. Yeah. So, uh, just <laughs> opposite of B, opposite plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, all over 2A. Feel free to sing the song as you do. I always no, do. I, I start off with row, row, row your boat, end up with pop goes the weasel. That's how mine goes. Yeah, it's really weird. Don't ask me how it happens, but it does. 49 plus 240. Oh, it's got a load. 289. Not that I doubt you, but I'm just going to double check. Okay. Over Keep six. teaching. I'll punch in. The square root of 289 is 17. Are you actually checking? Yes, I am, but it was loading, so now you gotta wait. Okay. So it's coming. Out. So, square root of 39 is 17. I'm going through a reboot here, I don't get it. So, we have to do 7 plus 17 over 6 and 7 minus 17 over 6. 289. Thanks. Is the square root of 39 really 17? Let me just double check that as well. Son, you're a genius. 7 plus 17 wow. is 24 divided by 6 is 4. 7 minus 17 is negative 10 sixths, which simplifies to be negative 5, five thirds. Look at that. Now we need to go back and check. So, this, uh, this is gonna get fun. 3, let's do 4 first, right? 3 times oh, yeah, 4. Oh, definitely 4 over first. Over 4 yes, minus 2. Plus 5 over 4 minus 4 equals, oh no, 4 minus 4. Oh, um, that's shoot. That's terrible. This right here is our problem. And typically, I feel like a lot of times that's where our extraneous solutions end up coming from because if I click in 4 here, guess what? I get a 0 on the bottom and that's not allowed. So that means that 4 is not really a solution. It's an extraneous solution. So let's try negative 5 thirds and see if that one works out. I guess we'll try it and see. I'm really bummed out about that 4 because it's going to be easier to do the math. No lies. Well, either way, we're going to have to do both. I, I would say it would be good to use our calculator maybe on this one. Uh, perhaps see? the old TIA something, 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 something. Well, come handy. 3 times negative 5 thirds. Hey, that's a 5 on the top. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That cancels. Good call. And negative 5 thirds minus 2. Mm. Let me just uh, get fractional. Common denominator is going to be 11, it's going to be 5 over 11 thirds on the first one. Negative 11 thirds. Is it negative 5? It actually is going to be 5 over 11 thirds. Because the negatives are going to cancel out. 5 over negative 11 thirds. No, no, no. 5 over 11 thirds. 5 over 11 thirds. Yeah, 5 over 11 thirds. So 5 divided by 11 thirds is really, is really 15, over 11. 15 over 11. Okay. And then this next part, negative 5 thirds, we need a 3 on bottom, which makes us a 12. It's negative 17 thirds. Maybe so 5 divided by 17 thirds is. It's negative. So that's 15, 15 over 17? 17ths. Oh boy, this is Numbers. 25 So that's going to be nine. 10 divided by uh, negative 5 thirds, uh, let's see, 5 thirds squared. Yeah, squared. 25 over 9 plus 18. Three. Oh shoot. Let me just let me just get this situation going. 10 over and then negative, Why do you have a negative? 5 oh, thirds you're actually plugging squared. Plugging, plugging, plugging. 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 So 15 over 11 minus 15 over 17. 15 divided by 11 minus, minus 15 divided by 17. Math, decimal, enter, enter, enter. enter. Hey, 90 hey, over 187. Hey, awesome. So Open negative 5 thirds wasn't the answer. So this one was a little bit tough, that fraction. Remember, you can use your calculator. It is helpful to make sure you understand the rules of common denominators. Yeah, common awesome. denominators are important. If you like a challenge, then you know, work it out by hand. But remember, you can use your calculator there to check it. Don't just blindly assume that it is really a zero. I mean, not a zero, a solution, just because the other one was. The other thing that you can do that's kind of sort of cheating a little bit, but while you're learning it's